This is Livestock, and in this video we are looking at vectors. So there are a few notes we need to do beforehand, and they are that vectors are equal if they have the same magnitude and direction, and then if you multiply a vector by a scalar, which is basically a number, it changes its magnitude, but not its direction. Now this means that Ka, and K is just a constant A, is a vector parallel to A, as they have uh, the same direction, but not the same magnitude, which is basically the length, and the vector sum is called their resultant. And all of these three will come in useful as we go through the video. But the first thing to do is just to look at how we're going to use vectors to show what a particular line is. And this diagram shows a trapezium, which is A, B, C, D, where B, C, so this vector here, is parallel to D, A. And then this is also twice as long. So we can always deduce that B, C is going to be 2q. But express these vectors in terms of p and q. And the first one to do is bd. So in order to do bd, we're going from here, b here, to d here. So in order to do that, that's going to be minus p. Now we know it's going to be minus because of the, uh, that is in that direction there, and we're wanting to go from b to a. Um, so that's going to be minus as it's the other direction, plus Q. So this one here is DC, and in order to get from D to C, we're going to have to go D to A, then A to B, and then B to C. And we already know that D to A is going to be equal to minus Q, again because Q is in the other direction. Then A to B is going to equal to plus P. And then we have to look at the question here, and it says that BC is parallel to DA and twice as long. And you're looking at this, basically K here would be equal to two as it is a vector uh, parallel. Um, so that means that BC is gonna be equal to two Q. We can obviously simplify this just to get P plus Q. And that there is our final answer. So this question involves slightly more context. And it says that a ship is being steered due east and a current flows from north to south causing the ship to travel at 12 kilometers an hour on a bearing of 120 degrees. So what is the speed of a current and the still water speed of the ship? And in order to show this, we have a salt triangle here and S is the, um, the still water speed and C is the current. As it's going east and the ship would start at this position here and if there wasn't a current, it would end up here. However, because of the current, it ends up here. And first of all, we know that it is on a bearing of 120 degrees and this would always start off in this direction straight to north and that will be 120 there. But then we can work out that this section in here, because that top section is a right angle, so that's 120 minus 90, so that is 30 degrees. And the first question is asking about the current. And in order to get the current, we need to find out what C is. And in order to do this, we're going to use a bit of trigonometry. So we know that sine 30... And we know that it's going to be sine because of a Sokotoa. So sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. And this is all GCSE stuff now we're using. And then the opposite is obviously here, going to be the C. And the hypotenuse is 12. So that's equal to C over 12. So therefore, C is equal to 12 sine 30. And we're working in degrees here. So put that in your calculator and make sure your calculator is in degrees, not radians. And you will get six kilometers an hour. Now, the next thing is asking for the still water speed of the ship. And the still water speed would basically be this S, as if nothing had happened and there wasn't a current in the water. And remember, when you're looking at speed, speed is basically the same as magnitude, they're interchangeable as well. So in order to do this, we're going to use cos instead, as so 
cap, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. Um, so that's why we're using cos. So cos 30 is equal to s over 12. So therefore s is equal to 12 cos 30. And again, we're going to type that into our calculator. And this time, we will get an answer of 10.4 kilometers an hour. And that's a vector's question with uh, slightly more context, where you have to interpret what it's saying more without it just being given to you. So the next thing to do is how to work out unit vectors. And unit vectors have a magnitude of one, and they can be worked out by doing A over the magnitude of A. And these things like the modulus here is equal to the magnitude. So the question here says, find the unit vector parallel to the vector 3i plus 4j. And the notation 3i plus 4j is basically saying three across and four up. So in order to do this, we're going to have to first of all work out what the magnitude of this is. And to do this, we're going to use Pythagoras' theorem. And that will be root 3 squared plus 4 squared. And that is equal to 5. And therefore, for each one, is going to be 3, because that's a, a is 3 here, over the magnitude of a, so then 5, and that will be i, plus 4, because that's what a is there, over the magnitude again, which is 5, and that will be j. And that is your final answer of when it asks you to find what the unit vector is, normally parallel to another vector. So very easy when you know this, but make sure you do learn this and also how to work out the magnitude. So the final bit of this video will look at collinear vectors. And collinear means when multiple vectors can pass through points to form a single straight line. And in order to prove collinearity, then you have to prove that one vector is a factor of another. So in this triangle, the triangle D and E are the midpoints of B and uh, C and AC respectively. And then the point G lies on AD and AG is twice GD. So show that BGE is collinear. And obviously that's a lot of words there, which are not very necessary. It's much more useful to look at the diagram. And in order to show that what BGE is collinear, we need to prove that BG and BE are a factor of each other and that they're linked. So first of all, we need to work out what BG is. And BG is the point here, there. So that is what BG is. And in order to do BG, so we'll say BG at the top, and that is gonna be equal. And then we're gonna to have to first of all work out BD here. So BD is equal to half. Now we're doing this because we know that D is the midpoint of BC. So then we know that BC is equal to minus P plus Q. Um, so that is going to be half minus P plus Q. And then we also know that DG now, and this is what we're going to do to get that thing, and DG is equal to a third. Now we know it's a third because it says that the point G lies on AD and AG is twice GD. So AG here is twice of GD, so that means that's going to be a third. And then it's going to be a third times by... Now we need to work out what DA is, and we already know that DC is going to be half, and then Q minus P, 
but that's because we just worked that out earlier. And then we're going to have to, to get that one there, we're gonna to have to minus another Q. Now I'll put this all in a larger bracket here because we have to remember to do minus a third Q at the end. So then we're gonna add these two together. And once you add them all together, if I do it here, it's quite a long list of things which can all be simplified at the end. So it's half Q minus half P. And then we're gonna do the third times the half, and that's gonna be getting one sixth Q. And then minus a sixth P. And then finally, we're gonna have that minus a third Q. Simplify all of that, and we're gonna get the simpler answer of one third Q to the minus two P. There we are. Now we need to work out what BE is, as BE is the thing we're trying to prove is straight, and we just need to show that BG is a factor of BE. And BE is a lot easier to work out than BG, as all we have to do is work out BC, so all the way down here, and we've already worked out BC a few times, and BC is just Q minus P. And we worked this out when we were doing what BD was and um, when we were doing what DC was, as that is just half of it. So that's Q minus P, and then we're going to have CE. So that's gonna be add what CE is, and CE is this one here. And we know that E is the midpoint of AC, and AC would be Q, then therefore CA would be minus Q and CE would be half minus a half Q. This can be simplified to give one half Q to the minus P, two P. And we want to get it in this form where we have the Q minus 2P in both, as therefore we know that then um, B, uh, BG is a factor of BE. And this means that BG is equal to two thirds B. Hence, they are collinear, and BGE is a straight line. So thank you for watching this video on vectors. Hopefully all the different parts of vectors uh, make uh, sense, and we will be looking at a further video next on vectors. So see you soon, and bye.